welcome to Star Wars Belt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chabon, and today, oh man, we're just ticking off ticking off those motivators. We've got we've had one down and now we've got another one. We've got Dallas Wood. How's it going, my man? Man, tick tick tock, and you're taking it to the head, yo. <laughs> I was gonna say I hope we're gonna get a, we're gonna get a couple of rhymes busted at the top as is. Um, that's your way. like a butchered two short line from one of his B side tracks. It's not bad. So we've been we've been we've been my son and I have been labeled as what you call old heads here in America. We love old hip hop. Oh uh, yeah. So they they reference us as old heads. Uh, Cuz so, we don't like really listen to the new stuff. Yeah, I I'm, I'm probably the same actually, you know, like I I sort of 2001 like Dr. Dre, like I'm a big Public Enemy guy. One of the best shows I ever saw was Public Enemy. Um, nice. you know, that kind of stuff is more my jam, you know, a bit of um, Ice Cube. Love a bit of old school Ice Cube. Oh, yeah. Cube's um, my guy. Yeah. So I'm always, whenever the motivator starts up and you just, you know, you, I'm like, what's he going to drop? <laughs> oh, so tomorrow, well, it'll drop tomorrow. We're recording this the day before the current episode on, it will be a Halloween, well, October 30th for me. Yep, Halloween here. And, and uh, uh, they... Like at the beginning of that one, I'll tell you, I do a Wu Tang line. Oh, nice! Yeah, nice. Are you it's doing? From, it's from a like it's from. Oh, I think it's from their '97 album, if I remember right, which okay. I really love. Revolution. Wasn't, wasn't there one that they released that like they only did like one copy or something? And then oh yes, yes, they did. Like they sold it for like I think oh Martin Skelly or whatever Skellig or whatever oh, the, the dude farmer did, douche yeah he fucking bought that shit and he bought it for like fourteen million or something from, and then like, didn't share it <laughs> and then didn't share it yeah and then it got seized by the government I think and all his like tax fraud <laughs> shit that he got arrested for so, so it's like the Ark of the Covenant now it's just sitting in some warehouse and like I don't think anybody's heard it. So maybe they need to do that model for like Star Wars. They just make one Star Wars movie, but only one person can pay to watch it. <laughs> well, and what's even more interesting about the album is a lot of the members of the Wu Tang Clan didn't really realize what the dude was doing. This producer that was making the album for RZA, so that he was like recording, like sk- he was getting them to do rhymes, but with like the beat, they weren't hearing the beat, so they have no idea what the album. They've they never the heard the album. There's like they 12, never heard the album. There's like twelve guys in the Wu Tang. So yeah, my yeah. um my brother used to be uh in a hip hop group here in Australia called Polo Club that had a few records out, and they uh they were on the bill with Ghostface in Australia. So really, they, yeah, yeah, they did, they did, they played a few festivals, they did a few things. I'll send you some links, you know, of its of its nice. time. But uh, Aussie nice. Australian hip hop always gets, you know, it, it can be jarring because a lot of them do it with an Australian accent. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I, I got to hear it now. <laughs> I'll send you some stuff after we go. Now, nice. um, well, we, we, we've been sort of lining this up for a couple of weeks and stuff and you know, getting ready and things, and it's been pretty big for news and stuff lately. But then all of a sudden, freaking Mando trailer drops yesterday, and then the Game of Thrones boys just jump ship. In so, the middle of our recording. In the middle of... Oh, I mean, that's the dream, isn't it? Really? Well, it put us to a stop because there was no way to compress it. You yeah, know, like we were just like, oh, what? Okay, and like we were kind of hashing it out for twenty minutes, you know, kind of. I guess that was the interesting thing about in the middle of recording a podcast when you get the news is like you kind of talk yeah. it out with everybody. So it's like you're like a, a live reaction. To it was it. like you're on cable news or something, weren't you? You had like developing news, just probably going, we're being handed a piece of paper here. Uh, Benioff and Wise have walked away from Star Wars. Now, have they? They haven't walked away, have they? Let's let's let's. They haven't walked away. They've been encouraged. I think to walk somebody away. Su- summed it up this way: is Netflix wanted them bad enough, they gave them nine figures to get them away from Star Wars. Yeah, I guess so. I guess because so. that's the kind of budget they have for the projects they're doing there is what is what it is. So, but I mean, they're only gonna. I mean, apparently they're only gonna write this Star Wars thing. Like, how hard is it to you know, do a few scripts? Yeah. Uh, it just seems weird. Like if you were really that into Star Wars, if you were that invested, you'd make you'd find a way. I, I just kind of feel like maybe the backlash from Game of Thrones maybe turned them off from doing anything with any kind of fandom. Yeah, I suppose. I mean that that's that's the only other thing I think. But to be perfectly honest, now that they've kind of left, I just don't feel bad about them not doing it. <laughs> yes. I feel like now it's, now we're getting Ryan Johnson stuff sooner. It doesn't. I almost feel like they catered to those dudes a little too much, personally. 
Well, it, it, it feels like they've just kind of gone, no one really, like if a tree falls in the woods, people just went, oh, like it was a bit of a collective shrug. And then they, just, yeah. they kind of left. Like, it, it's like all these sort of departures like, that they've had. So they've got like, you know, these guys, uh, Trevorrow, um, Lord and Miller, and the, the Josh Trank, the Boba Fett guy, which was never officially announced. It feels like all of them, everybody just kind of went, oh, seems like the right move. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. And the, the the fun thing about like having gone through it now a couple times is I feel like not even the the folks are always claiming that Disney's the worst. They really haven't been out of the woodwork on this one as much as they have in the past. I feel like it mm. it really feels like they're kind of like mm. well, it hasn't I don't know. Every time they talk about a director change or a producer change, every time in the past they would they talk about the sky is falling and then it always worked out. I feel like even solo, I mean, yep. that's Ron Howard's highest grossing film ever. Yeah. And people kind of go, <laughs> Oh, well, you know, they dropped the ball on solo. It's like, well, you know, we don't know what, what they were cooking. Four, From, it four, sounds like $400 it was a- million dollars sure sounds like not dropping the ball, but <laughs> Hey, whatever. And people just go, well, I'd like to see that Lord Miller thing. Cause I think it'll be totally messed up or ridiculous. Like I want to see it from a, from a, like a train wreck point of view. I want to see how bad it was that caused them to, to have to, to, to move oh, them no. off the project. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. It does. It does sort of look like the, the, the sort of the, the seas are parting for Ryan Johnson, aren't they? Sort of this Knives Out movie seems like it's going to be really good, and he just can kind of ride that success. Well, it 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 looks like one of the better indie films from a famous blockbuster director. Mm. Now, like yep. it it totally doesn't have oh a blockbuster director vibe to the trailer that I've seen. You know what I mean? No. And. I have a feeling that there's a good buzz amongst the people who were going to see the film, but there's some folks who are like kind of buying into the buzz because of his Star Wars yep. fame who otherwise would be like, oh, I might not have looked at this indie film, but now I'm like, ooh, I kind of want to see this indie film. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I've, I'll have i go see it. I, I, I think he, he tweeted somewhere like, oh, don't watch trailers. You'll, you'll see too much or whatever. So I've sort of ducked off the trailers and things. So I'll... I'll get to it when I get to it, but um, yeah, you know, he's on this sort of you know press tour for um, for Knives Out, and every, you know, the Star Wars questions always sort of eventually sort of come up, and he's a bit like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah I'm just, I, I don't know, I think I was, I was talking to King Tom about this the other day because I think he did that red carpet thing where he just said, oh well, you know, if it happens, I'll be really happy, and people were like, he said if if it's not going to happen, and I just went, I think the dude's just modest. He's just like, oh, you know, I'm not gonna, he's not gonna be like, yeah, man. It's all me. It's all happening. And yeah, just like, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. we'll get there. I've just as far as I know, we just we'll, 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 it's just going along. If it all happens, then, then cool with me. Um, he doesn't seem like I, he's a particularly egocentric dude. I, I I tweeted out that not only could this timing turn out to be a better situation for us Star Wars fans, for for one thing. I mean, I'm the thought comes to my mind. Oh, okay, so we're about to see the Mandalorian. There's going to be. I know how Americans are, at least. <laughs> the 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 average Joe non Star Wars fan will fall in love with this show. Mm-hmm. There'll be a, a significant amount of people who aren't as into Star Wars that will really fall into this show. And what I mean by that is we have a channel here called the CW, and they do a lot of W W uh, W B shows, which is like, oh, like the Flash DC universe, and, Flash, yeah, yes, yeah, and yeah. Arrow, and all that. That has a rabid following here. It's not super large, but I feel like people like that who really stick to television type fandom will glue to this show because just that trailer last night, Mm. holy cow, you know what I mean? It really like, it really made this look like a unique television experience on its own, Star Wars aside. So the reason I bring that up is I feel like Americans will cling to the Mando idea. Yep. This could be a real opportunity for Disney to do a Jedi Mando trilogy. Like, hey, where did the Mandos come from? Why is that armor so powerful? Like, what's the lore? But why is he such a great fight? Like, we've never, we've seen a little of it in Clone Wars, but can you imagine, like, these motherfuckers used to kill Jedi. So you reckon they'll go back, not forward? You reckon, I don't know. Do you reckon Rise of Skywalker will be, like, the full stop on this story for, for the foreseeable future? Like, you know, because basically I always talk about, like, time the time so you know last jedi was as far along we've been in time and now all of a sudden we've got these comics we've jumped forward in time a little bit more as we edge closer so 
Rise of Skywalker will be as far as we know. Th- like this is today, as in you know, if we get to the Rise of Skywalker, the end of Rise of Skywalker, the credits close. It's like, all right, well, that's as far as the story has gone to this point. You know, do they hold their powder before they jump forward again, and they start going back again, or I, I don't know. know. It's, I, I just feel like they, they sound like they want to start an entirely new sandbox. It's always been told to us since they announced Ryan was going to work on something for them. Mm. Hey, this is going to be complete. It just feels right to me. You've either got to go way back or you got to go forward. Or way off to the side, yeah. kind of not way back. Because like, I feel like with the Mandalorians, they have 2,000 star systems. They've already established this in canon yep. in Clone Wars. So... What's all that about? What are those star systems? Let's wh- how's their governments work? I mean, they could totally just do Star Wars, but not even tie anything to anything that's already. You, you know what I'm saying? So that's yep. what I mean by this is a perfect opportunity. There's other opportunities there too, and other parts of the. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we could do a first Jedi thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess people always kind of assume that those Games of Thrones dudes would do old old Republic just because they did old timey stuff with Games of Thrones. Not that there was ever any actual. Like, you know, we never knew anything, you know. No. So you see it on the screen and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm just sort of... I just want to get through this. I want to get to Rise of Skywalker and see where the pieces lie, you know. I, 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 I don't feel it's going to be... I mean, it's going to be a full stop, but it's not going to be a full stop, is it, really? Do you, do you sort of no. feel like there's going to be a lot of dangling threads and things still, or...? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, they have they have said it's a full stop to Skywalkers. Mm. You know, you know what I mean that that canon. I've asked this a couple so, of times. Like, do you reckon you know can a Skywalker be alive at that, the end of that movie for for the saga? The you know do they all have to be like no more Skywalkers? Like Kylo, Leia, like no none of them left alive to to close out that saga. Like, does it seem weird that you'd still have some hanging around if you were trying to end that? I just wonder if they if we're taking the term ending them liter- too literally. Yep. I just think they're just saying, "Hey, we're done with this family. <laughs> We've told that story. Yeah, let's go tell some other." It's just stories weird the that galaxy. their story that you could you can end it. It's just weird that you could end their story if there's still an influence in the galaxy one way or the other. You feel like like you know in order to end like you'd just be like, "Oh, Thanks. Leia's still there, or Kylo's there at the end." Like. I wonder what they're up to next. Like he just like I guess that's why questions. I feel like they won't go after Rise of Skywalker for a while. I'm not saying I never say never because I mm. think there's a whole sandbox there to play in. Yeah, I'm just saying they've sure exhausted that space between A New Hope and, <laughs> and Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, so you know I know they don't want to go and call it a prequel. So I just that's why I come up with stuff like, you know, mm. Jedi Origins and cuz it just really has nothing to do with Skywalkers. I mean it does, but it's just so not connected in that way that they can tell a story that not have it be a prequel. Yeah. So um what what do you got planned for Mando night? Are you just lights go down low, you get get in your comfy chair and uh bag of popcorn and and just take <laughs> it in or do you do you sort of get a few people around and watch it? You got a few of the two of your local boys around, you get a sort of have a little viewing party. I, I I wish we all had that. Like we could line that up. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't even I'm actually, necessarily mean the motive it is. I mean, like someone like Strut, he's near you. No, no, I mean the... Strut. Yeah, and 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 Dave uh, or Nick Palmer lives here. I I just the timing. In fact, I'm looking at my calendar now. Okay, so that's a Tuesday. Yeah, there's no way we could get together. <laughs> I probably, uh, to be honest, it's the lamest. I'll probably just watch it on my very large iPad Pro and oh. the first time, and then I'll put it on my big TV with the kids. Cause yeah, I want to make sure. I'm not saying like my kids couldn't watch it. It's just something about as a parent, like you just got to check, <laughs> just got to check, just in case. You know what I mean? Like I know I seem all hard, fast, and loose, and everything. <laughs> but at the end of the day. You know, I do want to raise some decent human beings. <laughs> and that was the moment they turned. You're just like picking your son up from jail. He's like, well, you maybe watch that Mandalorian, Dad. That was where it all turned. <laughs> right, right. I blame you, so Dad. Much, I'm not so much worried about him as my daughter is more into Star Wars. And I, I, and I need to see if like she's going to be scared by it. I don't think there's going to be anything in there that I would be worried about her seeing. Yeah. But I'm more or less like, okay, she's still at that age where she still gets, you know, nightmares and stuff. So that's really all I need to, you know, check. 
Yeah, well, my daughter's you know my my daughter's under one and 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 four, so she's Olive has an interest in Star Wars because she gets to watch videos on the phone of Star Wars. She likes Galaxy of Adventures and Forces of Destiny Ooh, yeah. and stuff. But anytime it's the movie thing, she's pretty in, uninterested. Really, she's just yeah. like and she we watched. I showed her the um. I showed her the Rise of Skywalker trailer because he put it up on the TV, and she was like, "Oh, Ray!" You know, and then she's just looking and she saw the scene with Leia, and she's like, "Who's that old lady?" I go, oh, "That's Princess Leia." She's like, "That's not Princess Leia. Princess Leia is young." I'm like, "Oh, well, the story takes a, a long time. So in one part of the story, you know, she's young like Ray, and then at this part of the story, she's old. She's like, "Oh, old like Grandma." I'm like, "Yeah, I guess that's, if that's well, the way you want to look at it, yeah." I, I, I'll put it this way: Carrie Fisher is my mother's age. Yeah, actually, she's almost exactly my mother's age too. Actually, now I think about she's it, she's exactly my mother's age. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> my mom's birthday was in February, and then when they announced, you know, Carrie's age, I'm like, <laughs> I always forget that that she's my mom's age. It always gets me every time. Yeah, it was young, wasn't it? Really, she yeah. definitely had some more mileage in her. Unfortunately, um, now Dallas, let's talk some Rise of Skywalker here. You guys okay. broke the trailer down last week and things, and uh, you know everyone's got their little. What's your what's your wackiest theory that you've been thinking about? What's something that you sort of that you're kind of thinking? Oh, I might turn up in this thing that doesn't seem. You know what we've seen doesn't give any evidence to it. But you're like, I still think this is going to happen in this movie. Yeah, like um, I have a feeling that shot where they show Lando sitting underneath, I think, is the Falcon. Oh, or yeah, the, the another group. ship. Somebody pointed out Maz Kanata in that scene the other day too. Somebody so like, we talked of, about that. Pulled last the contrast night. up and yeah, and we couldn't see it. We couldn't make it be her. No, really, it just looked like a blob. And, <laughs> and I know snaps there, snap Wexley, but that's because Greg Grunberg confirmed it. Yeah, he loves it, doesn't he? Anyway, I feel like somehow Lando's taking bets on if Ray's going to make it back from everybody. <laughs> that's what it looks like. In that Take shot. your bets. <laughs> Take your bet. She's gonna die. Let's make some money on this. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's still shilling, Lando? You don't think even you know a man in his seventies, he's he has a you know got a little nest egg somewhere. You know he's got a couple of investment properties or something. Or like, do you think we'll get I, kind of washed up, Lando, at the start, or do you feel like he's? Do you reckon Lando will just be there? I know you're a Lando have, guy. Or do you reckon they have to get Lando in the film? Th- this is where your question really is relevant, is around Lando, because I have nothing to go on. Mm. literally nothing to go on and i i will tell you this from the books that we've gotten you know saying that he's you know gotten into droid manufacturing he's a droid impersonator impersonario you can say it an impersonator <laughs> he's like yeah beep beep yeah. beep i'm a droid Im- impresario i think is what they called him in that one book mm-hmm. and uh then there was the reference to the casino in Bespin. Mm-hmm. In, uh, I don't know if it was in the same novel. I think that was in... Okay, I think that's Last Shot that was in. I, uh, you, I don't know the novels very well. I always turn to you guys and King Tom when it comes to the so, novels. So, so, so where I'm getting at is my headcanon would like to see the Bespin Casino. So somehow they meet up with him or we get to see it, or maybe like, I have a feeling Babu Frick and Lando have something to do with each other. Yeah. And 3PO getting worked on. I have somehow, that's really like what I have to go, like that's my speculation, but my heart wants like something to do with the casino. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just running the casino now. He's just putting, uh, he's like Bob, Robert De Niro in casino. He's just running well, the floor. Well, I think he was most proud of being the head of Cloud City. Yeah, because he was and legit. So, like he, he seemed legit, didn't he? Yeah, he and, and you know, in, in the books, you know, it says that he's gone gone back there, and you know, he's he's running a droid, you know, droid business out of there. And you're like, okay, he's mine a guest. I mean, it feels like it only makes sense that we find him there. And plus, what a great callback to Empire. Mm. Oh, look, I like Empire. the idea that he he gets involved. You know, not because he has to, but because he, you know what I mean? Like, he's kind of like, hey, I'm actually doing all right here. I don't need charity, someone to pick me up and give me a purpose in life. I'm actually going to have to put a bit on the line to help you guys out again. But, uh, yeah, I um, I mean, 
as soon as he gets behind that wheel of the Falcon, like uh, that, that, that really that shot of all the ships. I think someone did like a tiny, tiny zoom, and there was a little bit of yellow, yellow in there. Yeah, so, that's probably. I mean, the shot from the first, first, like from the celebration trailer where he's smiling and coming out of hyper. I really feel like maybe that's him showing up to that fight or whatever they're doing with that big, mm. you know. Uh, a massed fleet that we see with every ship that we can point out and that everybody's kind of froze. Is and he a, this is this and this is this. And Is he a particularly good pilot, Lando? Is he, is he like, I know he's always sort of like it, that ship is his, but you know, he obviously flew in the, the Death Star two battle and stuff. He led the charge, but he, you know, he had a whole crew of people and stuff and like have L three in there, but he's actually a, is he a particularly skilled pilot? Do you, do you know, is he considered a, a top, top pilot or is he just a dude with a good ship? I feel like um, he gets away with. Uh, uh, I think his reputation is bigger than his talent. Yeah, <laughs> when it comes Isn't to it that, all. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I think he's a good pilot. He's obviously yeah. not. I don't on. think he's terrible, but yeah, I mean, like he's not a Han or a Poe or a you know he's a Harris and Dula. Yeah. He's not one of them. But I mean. You'll get it. Yeah, done. I mean, he he he's good at recruiting talent because Nine Nub, man, clearly that dude can fight because he was the Star Killer attack, Death yep. Star Two attack. That's a guy you 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 know he's lived through some shit. Yeah, so he's like a dude who who's you know smart enough to bring a bunch of good mu- like a musician, you know, front of band, bring a bunch of really good musicians around and make him look good. You know, he's like okay, like James I'll put Brown. It- like James Brown's talented, but he's got a very good band. Which elevates yeah. James Brown. Like a good coach of a sporting team. Like yeah. knows how to get like the stars. And then you've got like, I'll get these people who will fill in here and yep. we can win. Like Lando's <laughs> good at that shit. I'll get you a win. He's like Phil Jackson or something like that. Or- oh, okay. I didn't know if you knew who Phil Jackson was. So I wasn't going to reference <laughs> I Phil only Jackson. know about three basketball coaches, but I do know Phil Jackson. Ah. <laughs> uh, there you go. Anyway, I've there impressed, you go. I've, been, I've been finally impressed Dallas with an NBA. Oh reference. no, you always impress me, but that is impressive <laughs> on its own. Um, yeah, wacky, wacky Rise of Skywalker stuff. I mean, I've heard wacky stories about like we're going to get a wedding, we're going to get a Raylo wedding. We're going to be like, you're out of your minds if you think you're going to get a Raylo wedding. I heard um, a cool theory, and I mentioned oh, this me. on the motivators, but I'll mention it on here too, dude. Go um, for it. A cool theory was that that shot where they're destroying that weird ass like Vader statue together oh, in, the, in the white room, yeah, yeah, and she has the dagger in her hand, and you know, mm-hmm. they're he's got the helmet on, yeah, you know, I somebody floated out there that what if that's like some kind of it has to do with the connection they have in their minds. But they're in uh, Kylo's yep. mind, yep. and they're freeing him from the dark side in that scene. Okay, yeah, I, like um, he's freeing himself from Vader. Like yep. he's freeing himself from that 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 pull to the dark in yep. that shot. I'm not saying that will happen, but that's a cool idea. Well, not I, a wacky I, theory, but a cool I, idea. I think it's it's possible. Like I. Somebody else was asking about wacky stuff, and I, I was I sort of thought maybe a lot of this film or bits of big bits will play in people's minds a bit. Like I, I even think it's possible that Ray is the vessel that Palpatine uses for a period of the film. That basically, like I, because I, we were sort of breaking down. When I had Catherine and Andy over, we were breaking down the trailer and we're looking mm-hmm. at a Death Star fight. And we're trying to go like, where does this take place in the movie? And we kind of basically established that it takes place earlier it does it's not the climax of the film basically um we think the space battle stuff is the climax and because you've got um uh finn on the horses he's in the climax battle at the end but then he's on the death star wreckage so if he's on the death star wreckage it must be earlier in the film so i reckon they're facing off on that wreckage earlier i think ray loses that fight so she either gets kicked off the thing or something happens to her that makes her vulnerable. Like I just, I have a wacky theory that she gets, you know, struck down, kicked off the the thing, falls into the water, and then basically the essence or the spirit of Palpatine saves her life or does something or it happens her, and that's where you're getting your dark ray from, and that's what he uses. He's basically, you know, this is the worst bloke in the world in his in his death place, um, and that's. I've heard know, something similar, but Kylo loses and causes him. He he loses the fight, but it causes him to go and find Palpatine. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, it could be that. Oh, look, I'm just throwing out some wacky. Well, some wacky I mean, stuff, we know but, but, nothing, so everything's yeah, but fair then, game. But sort of that. Um, so then you've kind of got this play out. So there's that shot in the trailer of Ray sort of in that sort of big sort of open chamber, and you can just see the the throne with the the hood there. Mm. So I think that all of that's playing out in in Ray's consciousness, where she's basically fighting the Emperor who's controlling her. So you'll actually get to see Ian McDermott on screen being emperor, but he's basically in her consciousness, just like I run you now, Ray, you know, and you've got good Ray in there, basically trying to fight her way out. And then on the outside, you've got dark side Ray going, Hey, let's pull all these star destroyers out of the sky and let's go do this. And let's go, let's go mess some shit up. Cause you know, I'm doing the, the bidding, um, yeah. That falls into another thing theory I had because I have a similar theory to that person's dream theory. Is I thought Kylo seeing Dark Ray and Ray is seeing the Emperor, how yeah. he used to be, yep, yeah. or something along those lines, yep. Yeah. But I wasn't sure if that scene, like where he's sitting in that weird like spider throne, because it looks like it's rocking, oh, joking, odd, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. on legs. But it, I, I'm also of the mind that it could be just we're looking into the edit. It just happened that they edited it in a way that it made it look like it, it the chair's moving in a certain... Yeah. Because we only get like... Psh, I've watched it a million yeah. times now. It could so just be the like, way it's pulling... Like just as the, the shot pulls, you know, pulls yeah. forward and stuff. But yeah. So, I mean, it would be interesting that there's some like sort of internal psychological stuff. Because if you're inside <clears throat> Ray's mind, right, and Palpatine can manifest himself in her mind, like... You can put Luke in there. You can put Anakin in there. You can put all sorts of people who are basically fighting for the soul of of Ray. You know, yeah. so they're all sort of using this thing as a as a place to kind of to nut it out. So it's not necessarily just Force ghosts ghosting around. They're actually in a, a physical space where they can you know do some more stuff. Um, you know, why not? It's kind of wacky. It's not quite Star Wars uh, Raylo wedding it, wacky, but you know. <laughs> it, here's another wacky theory. So we see that Star Destroyer, and it looks like a submarine coming out of the North Pole mm-hmm. ice. Yep. Like, it makes me wonder, what is that all about? We see all these shots of these Star Destroyers, yet they're riding horses on them. Yeah. They're not in space. Like, where the fuck are they? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I can I say no, that no, on the show? I dude, forget. you can swear. It's all right. It's okay. All okay. I forget. I forget. <laughs> We don't run a tight ship here, mate. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, <laughs> the loose ship. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's obviously an atmosphere because they're breathing and they're running around on top of this thing. Um, I just can't figure out why it's busting through ice. I mean, did did the first... I mean, did... they? And they look like OT Star Destroyers. Yeah, we sort of talked about going, maybe they've just been stashed somewhere. Cause, it, yeah, that's part go, of Operation Cinder. Yeah, because the whole thing is like, oh, they all fled to the outer regions. They all fled to the outer region. It's like, well, some of them might have gone to the outer regions, the ones that were operational, but maybe he's just been stashing stuff in places for ages, just waiting to happen. I mean, the Sith, troop, lands. the Sith Trooper thing, like, I don't know. I don't do spoilers, so I don't know anything about outside the official stuff, but like the Sith Trooper stuff just seems weird, like how they fit in. Um, oh, I can sell that in real easy based on the books. Oh, right. The stuff we've already seen. Well, they keep talking about how the Empire needs children in all these books. Yeah. And and if you go back to the Clone Wars, think about what she was doing with Force children and stuff. Why was he trying to get, like, young, 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 young kids and stuff? He, he's been experimenting with raising children. You know what I mean? And and um, I, it's funny. Right before the trailer came back out, I went back and played the first-person game of... Uh, battlefront 2 mm-hmm. and you see like the sentinel droids with yeah, yeah, the face, face yeah, on yeah, and stuff yeah. so the way that game that story in that game plays out it's all related to all this stuff i feel like we're gonna see in the, the rise can- of skywalker <clears throat> and back to the sith troopers i think the plan was always hey we're gonna like grab kids and experiment on regular first order troopers but we're gonna find the elite from all these kids we take yep and i i think the reason they look like first order troopers is i think we're just making a false assumption that Sheev raised those i think that he caused the original empire like uh brendel hux yep like brendel hux was a big key to that and in the aftermath books they talk about that i mean like it's all related i really feel like that those guys are trained by the first order they're not yeah that's why they look like first order troopers i'd um 
I talked ages ago about the the fact that they'd raised all these kids and program kids like how that might yeah. play into it in episode nine and just kind of going, oh, look, if you want a quick way to um, to flick the switch and to, to get rid of the first order, you just find a way to um, expose that flaw, whether you find a way to break their programming or basically, like I was kind of playing the idea of like Finn doesn't know who his family is and stuff, right? So then I think Finn you find breaks a way to their get, programming. Yeah, you find a way to get them the information about where they've come from and their families and they're all just like, I don't want to fight this stupid war anymore. Like I found out where my mum and dad are. They're like, and then you know, I found out who I am really. Like I get my identity back. I don't need to be part of this stupid first order thing. So I kind of felt like that might have been a MacGuffin or you know, information that's like, hey, we can actually break this first order down if we can, you know. And then it just sort of plays into that idea of Finn, you know, finding where he belongs and all that kind of stuff as well. And um, you know, and then you can kind of just trash the first order from there. But I don't know. Kylo is just a bit of a mystery in this as well. Like I know he's going to yeah. start bad. Like he's—I don't know if you've been reading the comics and stuff, but people—he's—you know, there's all these this, people keep going on about like, oh, you know, Kylo, he's not such a bad guy. He wasn't on Star Killer Base. And it's like, dude, in the comics at the moment, he's like flaming planets because they've had anything to do with the resistance. And it's like <laughs> there was a whole thing yeah. where there was like a planet, and they go, oh, you spoke to you helped some. We know the resistance were here, and you spoke to them. They're like, oh yeah, we we told him we couldn't help. He's like, all right, kill everybody on the planet. Moving on. Um, he's he's committed. He's in. He's, yeah, he's yeah. not wishy washy at the moment. It, it's uh, so they have that Kylo Ren comic coming out. Mm. Yeah, and Charles Soul, weird? the writer, said you have to read it before the first issue before you see the movie. Yeah, right. Is this the one with so, him and Luke on the cover? No, that's the second one. No, no, the second one will come out after the movie comes out. So right. obviously like the second one is full of spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I don't know. That excites me. Kylo Ren excites me in this movie. I might be more excited for Kylo Ren in this film than I am Ray. And usually it's me more excited for Ray. Mm. But now well, that she's met Luke and trained and, and you know, now I want to see the, okay, let's see what Leia's kid like, let's see his story. Let's see what happens. Yeah, where, which buttons to push? Which, you know, you, is you he going to be redeemed? Is he going to go out Vader style redeemed? Is he going to live at the end of this film? I mean, it's there's Star- so many possibilities. It's Star Wars. You feel like he's got to be redeemed in one. If he's not redeemed in the eyes of everybody, he redeemed in the eyes of some or, you know, in front of his mom or something like that or or something. But yeah, he's definitely an interesting case. And the fact he's like he's he's the top dog now, you know, like Supreme Leader Ren. What's his what's his motivations at the start of this? Is it just total total dominance, I suppose? You know, we see I think it was in the was it the sizzle reel that they gave us where they show him welding his helmet back together? Mm-hmm. Like they make a point in The Last Jedi to show how he, Snoke humiliates him by wearing the, the mask. That's why he smashes it, right? Yeah. yeah. So now I want to know, why did he fix it? I guess he doesn't have any, he's not answering to anybody anymore. You he's think like, so? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a, a sign of defiance. It's like, actually, I, liked it. I like that, and I'm top dog now, so I'll, I'll wear what I want. <laughs> I'll wear what well, I want. I'll do what I want. I'll, I'll, I'll be this. I'll, I've fully embraced the. And I think also that, you know, last Jedi there was a sort of hints that Ray was trying to turn him or trying to bring him back and Willy Wony kind of thing. And now he's just in. He's like, hey man, I'm in on this 100. percent Yeah, helmet he goes back on. Yeah, helmet's back on. So, How Sith is that? And then he's like, I don't <laughs> give a fuck about the Sith. So that's interesting. Because we know he doesn't, he says we need to end everything. The Sith, the Jedi, the Resistance, you know what I mean? He says that line in The Last Jedi. So it'd be interesting to see when he finds out that Palpatine's back or a version of Palpatine is, I mean, we still don't even really know. Yeah. Like what, what is that it? situation is? It, is, it, is, it is. inspiration? Is it competition? Is it, you know? is Did he survive and somehow, you know, he, he knew how, I feel like Plagueis comes into this too. Like the creating of life. Do you think the sort of creations of the Skywalkers will be addressed? You know, like the the immaculate conception. No, no, no. I don't want to go down there. I mean, it might be, but what I mean by that is what I meant originally was maybe that 
we we're always operating under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, you know, this is dark, this is dark side (coughs) abilities. They're using the dark side to, to stay alive. So basically like, I feel like he learned how to keep himself alive if he was about to die or I'm sure it's ripping off Voldemort in some way. (laughs) (laughs) But I think Voldemort ripped off, um, Sauron from Lord of the Rings as well, you know, like he was the original put my essence yeah. in an object guy, you know, it's been yeah. around for a while. But yeah, I mean there's so, been there's been dudes but, in the in the new canon comics in the Vader comic like a, a former Sith Lord who put himself into a object and then possessed somebody yeah. and did stuff. So like, I'm wondering if 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 she or or Emperor Palpatine somehow figured out to take that to the next level where his body comes back in some form. Yep. But oh, in man. a weak state maybe and he needs like them as much as they need him i don't know mm. that'd be interesting i wonder how much they know about palpatine like uh, do you reckon raven really know like she she knew who luke skywalker was a bit but thought he was a myth no. like would she even she knows that- who he is she would knows she- who he is because uh, luke references him yeah but he says the jedi Darth- allowed darth sidious to yeah i mean but i wonder he- at the time she's just like oh i didn't really know that i just live on some planet i didn't like, even I knew- know luke knew Darth Sidious name. Yeah. Like until it was weird, last it was weird hearing a prequel name in a sequel movie, wasn't it? Like I remember going like, oh, that's interesting. I was excited about that. <laughs> no, seriously. Like I I have over time have so much love for the prequels that I didn't have 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Like it has taken me a solid 10 years to totally love those movies as much as the original trilogy, just in a different way. What was your... Um was your phantom menace lead up like so i was in college um i was down at at, i was down at arizona state Mm -hmm. finishing up baseball i was moving on to the minors and um like in base professional baseball you have like minor leagues yep yep like so i was going to the top minor league just below the major league club below the show Yep, below the show, and I spent six weeks in the show, and it was the greatest oh, wow. time ever. Just like, oh, dude, uh, that's another whole podcast in itself. Let's we'll have to one, touch one on of that my one time. of my whole other like one of my great. I don't love baseball anymore, just for the record. But I'll be happy to talk about it because it was a big part of my young younger mm-hmm. life. I've done so much more since then <laughs> that it's like I, I don't even like. It feels like a movie to me, like a movie I watched. Like yeah. it's weird. I'm so the disconnected baseball from years. It. The baseball years, exactly. It's funny how when you age... Where were you? What what team were you in in the show? The Pittsburgh Pirates. Wow. That's a whole... Dude, I had no idea. You think you know a guy. No, when we went to Celebration, um, I called them up. They gave me like a hat and stuff to wear to the Cubs game the day before Celebration started. Yeah. (laughs) Remember me? (laughs) No, I just said, hey, uh, I called the PR office. I said who I was. I gave him like my players association number and stuff and they're like oh yeah 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 yeah. we'll have one at will call for you i'm like sweet what'd you play what position pitcher. i was a pitcher wow. the bowler in cricket <laughs> only he's hey, look, not I'm throwing impressed you, I'm impressed he's not throwing, throwing that, that shit 105 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour or, <laughs> Hard yeah. the ball, I, I, I used to get up to like 101 i could throw it 101 at one point like if wow. i throw it straight and i know i don't have to worry about him hitting it yeah i could throw it that hard wow Another life. Jeez, I've got a scoop here. I'm sure people probably knew this, but... No, uh, but lots of people know know it. Yeah, lots of people know it. It's honestly, like, so not a part of my life anymore that I just don't care. (laughs) (laughs) I get Star Wars now. Everyone else is more interested in it than I am, just to be fair. (laughs) Oh, no, like, it's fascinating. Like I said, you know, like, it's it's just something I didn't know about about you. They got the scoop. But, um, so, 99... So, I was in college. Yep. We, uh... I didn't see it... That's one of the... So I saw Attack of the Clones opening. That was my first opening day Star Wars movie was Attack of the Clones. Because I saw Empire at two years old, and I know my parents didn't take us opening night because they're just not those kind of people. <laughs> no. And then same thing with Jedi. You know what I mean? Like I saw it a dozen times in the theater, but we I don't think we saw it opening night. Yeah, and I then, saw Jedi in the theater, but only once. And then yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're you're like me, like vaguely remember seeing it in the theater. Mm. I remember it watching on the carpet in my house on VHS oh, yeah. more, yeah, yeah. or at my over friend's house on Laserdisc. I I talked about this earlier, like with Eric and them a couple of weeks ago about Laserdisc. I'd totally forgotten that. Like my friend had a Laserdisc player. We used to watch oh, wow. that shit all the time. Yeah, 
his dad was like really into movies and when his parents got divorced that was kind of like the divorce dad gift to the family was the laser yeah, right. disc player. Like, come over to my house and watch laser discs <laughs> no no dad. he gave it to he gave it to their family like oh, at his right. ex wife yeah so like they lived across the street so i mean we would you know and he had to flip them over yeah, and stuff. yeah like a whole movie didn't fit on one side you'd have to like it had a stopping point in the middle of the movie and you'd have to like flip the disc over but up until dvd came out i still had not seen star wars in better quality yeah well i don't think yeah i mean i just taped it off the tv we didn't have a home release it was too expensive to buy videos like you i bet they're like a hundred really buy- yeah. australian probably yeah yeah. And you couldn't really buy them. They were always just through video stores. It was very rare you could buy Same them. Same here. And then, Same here. And then, yeah, I mean, it was just on TV and I, I taped it off the TV, cut the ads out and then watched it. And I never owned a proper release v- VHS of it until special editions, I don't think. I've got I've got a set of videos on the shelf now, which are the, were like the last ones that came out before they... Um, they did special edition, but I got them at a flea market for like a dollar each. They're just purely ornamental. <laughs> uh, same here. I got a set from a gentleman who wasn't a Star Wars fan, but uh, he, he's a guy like I go to this coffee shop not too far from my house that like every once in a while I just hang out with these older guys that are just a blast to talk to. And he, he just like, I have this old set of the movies. I'll just give them to you. And I'm like, thanks, man. <laughs> nice. I got so, the, um, I was at the same market a couple of weeks ago and the guy had, two complete sets of the original trilogy on dvd the two discs that had the original cuts Mm -hmm. um which are pretty hard to come by and i'd actually got a a set there before and this dude had two sets of them so i I sort of sent a little message to the melbourne crew here like anybody want them you know a couple of people said yeah so i bought them i think i got two sets for 12 bucks or 15 bucks i think it was for nice six dvds yeah so the you watch the the dvd of the original cut is like in box format with the letterbox in the middle like it's it's pretty shitty <laughs> but it's the original <laughs> it's the original cut you know like if you really really want to watch it you can watch it like that but um right so you didn't go opening day phantom menace wasn't like a oh, it's coming it's coming it's coming no no i had to see it and i was excited for it but because of our schedule like yeah. you know cuz it came out in may that's the middle of our baseball season Oh, uh, yeah, of course. So I had to see it on the road. So I saw it in L.A., actually. And I don't remember the theater, but it was really cool. It was one of those dome theaters, you know, like where they project it, like the planetarium kind of Oh, deal. wow. You're like lying I don't back. even think it's around anymore. I don't even remember. We just, the, the team arranged it. And we just went. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those deals where like, we showed up in the charter bus. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to see it. So I didn't really get in. I, I think I saw it maybe eight times in the theater, which mm-hmm. for me at that time, that was quite a feat. I think I did it over like two months because it was in the theater. Here yeah, for same for me. Five yeah. or six months. So uh, I tried to see it as much. And I remember not liking it as much as the original trilogy, but I did like it. I really liked Qui-Gon and Darth Maul and seeing Obi-Wan as a Padawan. I loved all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we're pretty much the same age, you and me. And I was in university, college, whatever, at the same time. And, <clears throat> you know, you got plenty of free time. So I would go. I think I went eight or nine times, maybe even ten times. But, it, yeah, over two months, you know, because it was – Yeah. Now you'd be lucky if a movie's in cinemas for a month. You know, they usually just pull it. Yeah. Like, and then it's I think just I got, on DVD. My goal like, with Last later. Jedi was 25 times, and I only got to 22. Oh, not bad. Yeah, it was hard to stuff it in we, in six or eight weeks, yeah. So <laughs> my plan this time – I'm going to hit 25. I'm going to. Wow. So what's uh, your opening so, night? So, so the goal tickets? is – yeah, I've got the tickets. They're all sewn up. It's going to be my my just my family, my wife and kids. Yep. So the, a very da- a us, very wood screening, a very wood screening. Yes. So <laughs> they they they're I mean the kids are Star Wars fans. Yep. But they're they're not to our level still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and my wife is like into Harry Potter, but she's coming along because you know yeah. we're also into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So. So I think um, she just wants to be part because I always went to her opening night of all the Harry Potter books, and I just loved seeing her like, like Harry so Potter. into it. You know what I mean? I, I enjoy the. We went quite to the um, we went to the play. The play is showing in Australia in Melbourne at the moment. Like the oh, Cursed uh, Child. The Cursed Child. I want to see yeah, that. It was brilliant. I read the yeah, book. We, 
it's two like two nights, but they do on the weekends. You can go the matinee and then the evening. So we did the whole thing Fine. in like seven hours, or whatever it is, and potted out. And it was amazing. Like the production values were just crazy. Like they're doing Fine. magic on stage. You know, they're like they're doing things, and books will fly off a shelf and do cool. all there. Like it's it's awesome. It's definitely worth seeing if you ever get a chance to. But um, well, and what's neat about that is is it's not overproduced. You know no. what I'm saying? Oh, like it's... Y- you can easily make that look fun on the stage. It doesn't look, you know, it looks fake, but it's not like what was that Spider-Man play where the dude was like following and <laughs> yeah, shit? And turn all... off the dark or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was like you two. Like, as soon as yeah. I heard that, I'm like, that's gonna be some corny ass shit. Did you know anybody who saw it? No, I wish <laughs> I did. I want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was there. I've been in New York a few times. I don't think it was ever playing when I went. I probably would have gone. If, if I'd got, been able to get a ticket, and I would have just gone out of morbid curiosity, I reckon. But I know it would have just been like, this ain't Spider-Man. Or this is some weird version of Spider-Man. Okay, I know this is a Star Wars podcast, but we got to talk about this. If you were going to do a, Star, or a Spider-Man play, mm. all you need to do is do what they did in that Tobey Maguire one with the wrestling, but like make it the play. Where Spider Man's like wrestling some rando amateurs, and you have like what's his face from Evil Dead, oh, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Campbell. <laughs> yeah, have him bring him in, bring them all in. Let's make a play around that whole scene in the first Spider Man because like it had Macho Man. I mean, it was ridiculous. Remember I he just, played Bones? Yeah, saw? yeah. He's like Bones. That, that's a play ready. there. I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you, that's that's a that's a play there. Have someone be Bones? <laughs> I just don't need Spider. I just don't need Spider Man singing. That's the like. Oh that's my hell, I forgot it's a musical too. Yeah. Holy shit. That's the thing that like the Harry Potter one isn't a musical. It's got music, but it's not like they just stop and break out into song and stuff, which is always, you know, always a bit weird. But no. I, you know, I, I, I just, you, you know, I need to get to the theater more. I, I really would enjoy that. And there's been some great plays in here in town, like <clears> the Book <throat> of Mormon finally made it to Utah. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Oh uh, my God, yeah, I haven't well. seen it yet. I got to see it. It's amazing. I saw it in. Um, I seen it twice. I saw it in London when it opened there. They did a um, a preview week before it opened, and the tickets were really cheap if you sort of queued up. And I was <clears throat> between contracts at the time, so I got there at like nine in the morning, queued up for like eight hours, and got tickets for when Cat was coming over from Melbourne to stay with me in London. And um, it was the opening night of the previews, and Trey Parker and Matt Stone were there, so they got up and nice. said, "Hey, thanks for coming." And I was going to yell out a basketball reference, but I mean, no one would get it, and I don't know. Oh man, I <laughs> love ever seen basketball. basketball. I love basketball. I love that movie. That's my. That was our go-to university. Get home after being out drinking, put basketball on. I've yeah. seen that movie fifty times. I, I've easily seen it. That you know, it's a good. <laughs> it's a good like cross-faded movie. Like just something you want to laugh and you have to think about. Yeah, for sure. One of those films. Yeah. For sure. Um, so they've got the Woods family screening on the first night. Now, yes. is that the Thursday evening? Because you don't yes. do... There's no midnight screenings in America anymore. So there's no it, 12.01 a.m. Thursday, is there? So for Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rogue One, and Solo, the, late, the earliest we could see here in Salt Lake City has been like a 9.30 or 10.30 showing. It's in never been a midnight. No, no, yep. at night. It's never oh, been night. like. No, so it's, that, it's always been at night, but it hasn't been a midnight showing. Like so is it that was, the Thursday or is it the Wednesday? The Thursday. The Thursday. And then Friday's yeah. opening day. Yeah. Now, Cinemark, a movie theater chain here, did has done a fan night. And everybody was buying the more popular theater chain here. And so mm-hmm. I couldn't get on the app and buy tickets. So I ended up buying really awesome seats to one of those theaters where cinem- there's one of Cinemarks where it it's all lounge chairs. They're all recliners. Oh, nice. Yep. yep. So the ticket was regular price, but I get a luxury well, they, seat. They do that now. So the one of the, the chains here, Hoyts, um, <clears throat> they've renovated a whole bunch of their cinemas and just the regular seating is all just like recliner. And that's like at no extra cost. So nice. They've got like so the really the high deal. end stuff. Yeah. But they've got like, you can put the seat up and yes, because we get it the day before. So the Thursday is our opening day. And then midnight, Wednesday midnight, which is, you know, 12 or 1 a.m. Thursday. So we're all going down to the same place. We've done the last few movies mm. and things. We'll have the Melbourne crew down there. We don't know if nice. there's live Steel Wars yet. We saw, we saw Steel a couple of weeks ago and he was sort of. Not sure if he's going to make it or not yet, but we'll all be down there regardless. So, so I there. will be seeing at six p.m. on that Thursday. Yeah, that so was will the, be. Yeah, that's, that's the exciting that. part for me. This will be the earliest the day before mm. it releases that I've ever seen it. 
yeah, we'll be out by then. So we'll be. I'm not going to try and figure out the times and things, but yeah, we'll definitely be out of it by then. So I was we'll figuring be... it'd be about the same time. So and Cruiser, <coughs> uh, I don't think he's seeing it that night. I think he's seeing it the next day. Oh right, I mean that's. And then the... I'm getting with Dave Strutt, Nick Palmer, and do you know Tim Dunlap? Was he at Celebration? Yeah. He won our pass. We gave yes. away a pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did meet him. Yep, yeah, yep. so he's flying in from Minneapolis, and we're going to see oh, it that nice. weekend a bunch of times. So we're going to see it that Friday. Uh, then we're going to see my And my plan is that Sunday to just go every showing I can, you know, one after the other. <laughs> no, I think I'm going to fit five in that day. Wow. Oh, my I God. I hope to. That's my goal is to Grown do that kids, three man. Sundays in a row. Grown up kids. That's the, you know, that's the dream. I've got Dude, to grown up children. <clears throat> okay, so... I have to tell everybody with younger kids that I'm friends with, you need to remember for six years, I watched my kids every single night while my wife waitresses <laughs> and they were little, I was putting them to bed and you, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. My friends would have to come to my house and we would buy the UFC pay-per-view while my kids were asleep and we drink beers <laughs> while we were watching the, the fights. In fact, funny story, my son, when he was like three years old, crawled out of his bed and came upstairs, or four years old, he crawled up, uh, came upstairs and like tried to take a leak next to the TV because he thought he was like in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> right in front of us and we're watching a You're UFC like, fight. It was awesome. Let's just say how this plays out. It's worth wait, it. wait, he's going to knock him out. Don't pee yet. <laughs> nah, no, I just picked him up and took him to the bathroom. It was fun. Um, yeah, oh, look, we don't get out much little kids at the moment. We do, we're paying our dues yeah. at the moment, but that's all right. That's, Dude, uh, it, it, you'll enjoy when they're older so much more because you've gone through what you're going through. Yeah, yeah. And we're getting to do, like I'm doing the midnight and then we've booked <clears throat> the Friday night here with my best friend and his family and Kat's coming along and we're doing another Star Wars. So I've got two booked and then I think I finish work for the year oh, cool. for a few months the Wednesday. So Star Wars night, I finish work. I'm out, off work for three months. I'm taking parental leave. So my <clears throat> cat's going back to work. I What's get that? paid. <laughs> yeah, I get I get paid parental leave through, through my company. So We don't have that uh, here in America. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know Jess Schrader, when I told her about that, she was very jealous. <coughs> Hi, Jess, if you're listening. Um, so oh, that's my last best. day. So the Thursday, we'll probably get some of the Melbourne crew back together and we'll go again. So, um, yeah, and it's going to be a long one. It's going to be the longest Star Wars movie ever. So... You know, committee. Um, it beats Sith by what? <coughs> Nine Last minutes? Jedi. Look, Last Jedi by three minutes. Oh, okay. I feel like they could have made it three hours and we and it would have been fine. Yeah. Oh, you know, it, it, it's... It, I mean, like, Endgame is three hours and there's plenty of chuff they could have chucked, they could have cut out of that. I agree. I feel like <laughs> it didn't need to be three hours. No. I mean, all that sort of mucking around with the time machine, you could have, you know, slice a few... Slice a few bits out of that, but okay. Uh, I I definitely wouldn't want them to cut out the Hulk giving Ant Man tacos after his tacos got ruined. That's one of my favorite <laughs> scenes. When Funko makes that pop, I'm owning it. Mm. God, we haven't even touched on collecting stuff. I got a um, I got a white box ray the other day. Um, nice, a dude online. I would bought a black box one, and I was going to take it out of the box, which I don't normally do, but I was going to take it out, put a ray up. And there was a dude on this. We've got this sort of black series collectors group here in, in Australia. And he'd bought a white box one. And he had this close-up photo going. He thinks the face looked... Oh, I'm showing me the Boba Fett. The, uh, I do this to everybody, I guess. The 40th on, anniversary. Skype. Yeah, we're never yeah. going to see that. <laughs> scalp, scalp prices, by the way. Don't feel bad. <clears throat> oh, really? Yeah, I yeah. can't do that. But um, yeah, the dude just said he had a ray. And he said that the sculpt looked funny. And he thought her face looked weird. And he said that she looked like Chunk from... Not Chunk from... Goonies. What's the dude in Goonies with the weird face? Um, uh, sloth. Sloth. <laughs> it was like really? kind of like sloth face Ray, and he shows the photos, and I don't know where he was coming from, but he just goes, "Oh, look, I just want to swap a block. I'll swap a black box if she's got a normal face for this sloth face Ray." And I'm like, "I'll do that. Like, I've I've got one right here." So, yeah. So I sent it to him and got it back, and it looks fine. Like it's sitting on the shelf anyway, and I can go go into any store and get a black box one for, you know. Yeah. regular prices so i'm just like dude works for me if you, if you want to give it up but i've got um i've got four carbonized mandos that i managed to get wow uh, yeah i had to order them from the uk um because i got a uk bank account and managed to get on their first friday deal before everybody else and get four so i got one for me one for fresh one for andy campbell and i got one spare at the moment so nice yeah it looks good nice and shiny i, I was <laughs> i was very chapped to get all of the white boxes that I wanted. 
Have you got the carbonized? All but the second sister and the jet trooper. Yeah, right. And um, I want the jet trooper, but I'm not too worried about not having the second sister in a white box. I'm cool having her in the carbonized, just the carbonized. So that was the one I was just, yeah. And, you know, I wasn't going to get the off-world Jawa, but I'm glad I did because I had the regular box off-world Jawa for some reason. I just bought it because I thought, I'm not getting the white boxes, so I'll grab this one because I wanted this one. Yeah. And what's funny is because I was – Nick Nick uh, Palmer grabbed me that white box, I was able to open it for Snoke Sex Shows. <laughs> <laughs> love, I love those. I know some people Thank you. I'm glad somebody taste. does. You and I Mark. Do. <laughs> I don't know what that says about us, but it's like, hey, if you're going to open them, let them let them have some fun, hey. Well, um, if you're going to tell me to open them, I'm going to make it so you wished I hadn't opened them. Is what my thinking was. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying this as I've guessed it. For those of you that that listen, Snoke sex, sex shows are designed to get Eric Strathers to come to the negotiating table on Taylor Swift. <laughs> you need to find a. Um, I baited him last figure, night. Put her by in the there. way. I, I said, hey, is Carly Rae Jepsen the uh, poor man's Taylor Swift? And I, I thought he was going to be more offended. He wasn't offended at all. I was a little disappointed. Uh-huh. You need to find a, <laughs> a, a Taylor Swift action figure that you can put in one of those shows and see what his reaction is. Oh, my are. hell. That's a great idea. No, no, no. I got it. I got it. Um, I wonder if I got like a Padme and like dyed her hair, like went custom. Oh, did they do? I'm gonna Attack of the Clones, I'm gonna Padme. I'm going to have to see if they do Taylor Swift action figures here. Oh, you know they do. Speaking Acting. of, hang on. I got one to show you. A custom I got from Nick Bomer. Oh, wow. It's Lando in Han's outfit. That's amazing. And Kenner, three and three quarter Kenner card. That's so cool. Isn't that dope? The smuggler's outfit, it says. <laughs> <laughs> Should just say hands close. Hands, yeah, hands laundry. <laughs> um, dude, we could this could go on for hours, but what we might do is we'll just get you back on another time. It was ridiculous sure. you hadn't been on yet. Like it's just, you know, it was the best thing ever meeting you guys at celebration and just being like fun. friends straight away. You just don't know if sometimes these things gonna go, and just as soon as we're in the room, just like, oh, dude, these are my. How boys. fun was that dinner? And then we did Echo Base party. Uh, How fun was that? I just can't. I just can't wait to do it all again. I can't ramp up the celebration talk. I just can't, you're com- can't you're wait. coming, right, to Anaheim, yeah. right? Okay, Dude. I wasn't sure because I, I I'm trying to like keep track of who's coming because I know <laughs> it's a big big ask for you guys to come up from. No, we were just you know we had the best time, so we were just gonna we were gonna make it happen no matter what. So have you, you been know, to now, LA? Only the airport when I changed planes to go to Chicago. So okay. I'm trying to work I, out whether I'll do a few days. I've got an extra day <clears throat> after celebration to go to Disney booked for the house but okay. <clears throat> might do a couple of days in la after i've just got to work out schedules and i'll be honest with you um i wouldn't waste any of your precious time on la tourist traps okay I-, I would just say you know do the disneyland thing and then save your time for all the star wars stuff that you're going to want to do that sounds good to me that yeah. sounds good to be now you've got a few eggs in a few baskets podcast wires uh-huh what do you Let's plug. Let's tell me what you got. Obviously, bad motivators. So I'm on the bad motivators, and I do. We do a Patreon uh, subscribership, and I feel like out of all the ones everybody does, there's a handful of them, and they know who they are. But I feel like having had them go before us, and you know, say, okay, I want to give everybody their money's worth, and I feel like we do that. So sure. with my show, Tark and Tangents, which we'll have you on. Of course. Love to. Anytime. Um, I'm thinking like we'll do post Jedi, Last Jedi. Let's do that like after the first of the year because I've got a couple of people lined up that I think you we you and I could have some fun with on there. So anyway, nice. basically we do what we do on this show, only you guys do a little bit more Star Wars talk. I mean, I, I literally, <laughs> it's called Tarkin Tangents for a reason. And the reason I called it Tarkin is because it sounds like Tarkin. <laughs> and, and we all love Tarkin. He's great. We did message me yesterday when we started this. You're like, oh, dude, so just send the show notes over. I'm like, show notes? <laughs> we just let it ride, man. You're like, oh, dude, I'm all about letting it ride. <laughs> exactly. That's the way it should go. Conversational. I think people enjoy that. You know what I mean? But anyway, mm. um, that's what that show's about. But with, if you are a fan of alcohol, 
this is the show for you because it's kind of become an alcohol show (laughs) and i always have to book the guests and i gotta say okay everybody's expecting us to be drunk by the end of the episode or at least sound drunk by the end of the episode which isn't hard by the way (laughs) (laughs) and uh, i think everybody's embraced it what i love about so when you come on make sure you bring some stuff you've never tried before because that's kind of the fun is telling everybody hey we're gonna open this beer up and it might be terrible and luckily, we haven't had a lot of that uh, on the show. They're always I, all right, are they? All right. Yeah, yeah so uh, we'll have you on. I th- I'm thinking after the first of the year. So Yeah, man, I'll be on holiday, so it'll be a lot easier to you know, say, I'm going to do some drinking in the middle of the day to podcast with my friend. You know, I should be able to you know, sell that a little bit easier when I'm on holiday. So Well, I'm thinking like if we could line it up so you're, I, I'm doing it on a Sunday morning because I don't mind, you know, and it would be an evening for you. You know what I mean? Yep. So uh, Sunday, like noon ish, would be like Monday evening for you. So if you're off on of yeah. Monday and Tuesday, that might work too. We'll make it work. We'll make it or work. Or we could do like Saturday, same thing if I'm not working on a Saturday. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> I have one other project on the Patreon that will be coming up soon. We haven't recorded the show yet, but I'm anticipating doing it this next month in November with our friend Steve McManahan. Nice. Steve D on Steve-a-D. Twitter, as he's known. Uh, we're going to do a Star Trek show. Oh. Wow, so, talk about flipping Star the Wars script. guys who love Star Trek talking about Star Trek. I think there's a few of those. I don't so, think it's the so, divide people say it is. I, I think um, this will be a once a month show. So we're not going to be doing any like watching or, I mean, really like we're going to summarize Picard and Discovery. We're going to mm-hmm. talk about our favorite movies in the series. We're going to talk about shit we don't like. Because for me, I. I make fun of Star Wars, but I sometimes mean make fun of Star Trek. (laughs) So I need to tell everybody, I like Star Trek. So when you listen to the show and I'm making fun of Star Trek, I really do like it. But there's a lot of stupid (laughs) shit in it that drives me nuts. I think I've well voiced it on tangents. I don't know if you've heard, but you know, if, if you're going to fight an enemy, there's no time to have a conference in your in your meeting room <laughs> on your starship. Hey, that's what they're all about, man. Can you imagine um, Boba Fett and Bosk? And Zuckus <clears throat> and Four Lom or Four Four L O M, whoever you are, you know, and, Bo- and they're all sitting at like the Star Destroyer conference room before they go into the asteroid field to get Han, taking minutes <laughs> and things like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You've got uh, Admiral, that back Admiral Piet. Uh, He's over there on his like court teletyper, <laughs> stenographer. <laughs> He's like, so at. Uh, yeah, twelve twenty-two. You said that you wanted to uh, disintegrate them, I believe. And, uh, yep, so that's all on the record. We may proceed. God damn it, Bosk, you drooled on the carpet. That that would <laughs> be Star Trek. Again. <laughs> carpet. <laughs> Fucking and, carpet. Uh, socials? Oh, yes. Uh, at Tarkin Tangents. There it is. There and it is, that's, that's the best way to get... I'm on Instagram, Dallas Wood, but, I mean, it's very rare. I post very much on there. I'm We're, we're kind of venturing into Instagram. It's new for me. <laughs> it's a whole new world out there. It's a whole new world. Um, well, you can find our stuff at starwarsbeltout.com. Um, we've got stuff on TeePublic as usual. Hey, 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 hang on, hang on. You need to tell your listeners your TeePublic shit is awesome. <laughs> I, I own a Lando go. shirt that I wore yesterday. I've slept in that shirt, yo. Oh, baller. I love that <laughs> nice. shirt. That was the greatest shit ever when you made that. I was like, I had to I'll tell make... you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. I, I, I love making them. I haven't really done much for a while. I'm trying to think of one for, um, Episode nine hasn't come to me yet. But do an episode nine in New Zealand blacks for me because I'm a big New Zealand blacks fan. Oh, an all blacks. I'm an all blacks fan. Yes. I don't know if an Australian is allowed to do that. That you can do the Australian one. I like the Australian team too. Oh, the Wallabies. Okay. Yes. All right. Or a Springbok. uh, I'll do Springbok too. I like the Springboks. Okay. All right. Okay. It's always they got some beefy motherfuckers. The Welsh team has some beefy motherfuckers on it too. God damn. Let's talk rugby, guys. (laughs) They're all next. Those guys. My son's Um, a big rugby player, so I fell in love with the game. So. Oh, nice. Put an AFL footy in his hand. Come on. Next. Next task. (laughs) <laughs> we'll see how college goes and we've lost it um dude thank you so much for doing this absolute pleasure um and we'll get you on again soon man excellent thanks for having me on see you soon bye
Thank you.